machetes tonight? No, we're not in, uh, we're not in Denver anymore. Aw, I really want their tacos. And their marks. <laughs>
for for one piece <laughs> of sashimi, it can be anywhere from eight to twenty dollars for that one piece. I mean, a bowl of miso is like a fourth a cup of miso, and it's like almost sixteen dollars for that. So you are absolutely going to pay for it, but the experience is what you go there for. I mean, every every waiter or waitress seems to know the in and out of every piece of fish they serve, how they should be eaten, and what order they should be eaten, and it's it's just an immaculate experience. It's not for everyone. Uh, Megan didn't go with us. It was me and my friend Florin. So if you haven't, shout out, shout check out, out his uh, channel following <laughs> Florin. He was in Denver with us for two weeks, a week longer than what he intended. And, um, you know, we got to experience all these places together. And Uchi was, was definitely a high-ranking experience for us. But if you're really looking for that place to go binge out and eat your sushi, Sushi Sasa. It's, it's not going to kill your bank account. I mean... If you're taking a group there, either everybody should bring their own money because it's, <laughs> it's expensive. That, that's all I can say. But it's worth it for the experience. Okay. So our next favorite place, we probably ate there four or five times, six times, a lot. It's probably says favorite place we ate. It's called Denver Biscuit Company. It is super famous. They have two or three locations in Denver, and you could be waiting hours to get into it. So go early. You can't even do reservations, so go early. But they give you biscuits. Well, there's a bunch of different types, but they are massive, like that tall. Check out our Instagram because there's pictures on there. But they're massive, and Seth can maybe say more about it. I grew up in an Appalachian town in Virginia, on the west coast of Virginia. That area, the Shenandoah Valley, biscuits and chicken, fried chicken, it, it, it's a staple. It's, it's something that kids learn to make from their grandparents growing up. And I thought we had like, you know, the best biscuits and fried chicken. I don't know what you're doing in Denver, but that is the best biscuits and chicken I've ever had in my entire life. Their cinnamon roll is like the size of my face and covered in bacon. It's good. It's, it's a heart attack in a box, <laughs> but Pretty much. we went there way too much it's absolutely amazing you have to check it out it's a denver local it's a staple it's an experience you can't go without gotta eat there so the next place it, it's not authentic like it's it's not like it's not like a food truck from this particular country but machete tequila and tacos has without a doubt, the best tacos that we had in Denver. Uh, the quesadilla is amazing. The drinks are all amazing. You know, if you go sit outside, the inside is small, and especially on the weekends, it's dark, the music's pumping, it smells like alcohol. It's not for us, but the outside seating, you get a beautiful view of Union Station. You know, they put heaters out when it's cool at night, and it's it's a great experience. The food is amazing. Florin and I actually went there twice in the same week. <laughs> uh, once for dinner, once for lunch. And it can be relatively pricey as well. I mean, you can pay anywhere from like, what, eight bucks to $12 for a taco. Yeah, you pay by a taco. So you pay like a list and you pick out the tacos. It can get expensive, but it's, it's one of those things that the tacos are so good and they're they're so hearty. It's not like you need six tacos. Uh, I mean, most nights I would have two, one or two, and a quesadilla. And that was more than enough food for me. Um, I don't, I don't like margaritas. Did you have the margarita? Yeah, I had the margarita once. And Florin had the margarita. It was good. 
they said they were very good, so I'll take their word for it. Um, it it's, it's one of those things. You have to go check it out. Go on an evening time, though, instead of lunch. Go for dinner. Sit outside and just enjoy the views of the city because it's, it's beautiful. Our last thing for food is Little Man Ice Cream. It was probably my favorite dessert place that we went to while we were in Denver. Um, it's up in Low High, and it's actually in this like tin milk can, right? Old milk can. Old milk can. It's like 50 feet tall. It's super small on the inside, and you order at like a window. But they're known for really good ice cream. The lines could be like super long any day of the week. Um, they change up their flavors daily. So some of their flavors they have every day, and then they have new flavors. Um, they also have vegan ice cream. So Seth always got the vegan ice cream since he doesn't really like ice cream. I don't, I don't do milk. Um, but definitely really yummy, good dessert place, easy to get to, cheap, yummy. So this portion of the video is going to be all about experiences, things that you can experience. Now, some of these things are not going to be in Denver, which, sorry, but they're all an easy day trip or two day trip in order for you to go do. The first is going to be the Sunwater Spa. It's in Manitou Springs, which is outside of Colorado Springs. And we have a video that we posted before this from the Sunwater Spa. We went three times. Yep. Um, you have to make reservations, but it's one of those places where you go to, you get your own private cedar tub. The water is, I mean, it, it, everything is cleaned. Everything is like, I mean, above and beyond clean. Um, they follow all these like, you know, EPA laws and everything. So you don't feel dirty. No. The, the cedar tubs, Kind of excrete these cedar oils in the water and it's stuff that cleanses your skin you can get a massage you can hang out in their salt water pool and it's no matter if it's 80 degrees during the day and you're there during the daytime or you're there in the evening to watch the sunset it's a magical magical place to be i mean megan had a massage there and was in heaven um, we did go to another hot springs which was like a community style and this place definitely beats that because you get your own private little yeah. tub versus being in a big community pool so kind of a different experience there and if you're like us and you're not exactly people 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 persons <laughs> then the community style pool hot tub hot springs is not for you because literally the one we went to there was like a thousand people packed into yeah. one okay. small area kids jumping around yeah it, not for us. No. So, Sunwater Spa, check it out. It'll be linked down below. The next experience is dog sledding. Now, this was probably my favorite thing that we did while we were in Denver. It's actually, we did it through, what was it called? Snow... Snow Buddy Dog Sled Adventures. That's what it's called. Outside of Steamboat Springs. Um, we also have a video on our YouTube channel about this experience as well. Um, so just talking about it real quick, uh, the lady that owns it, she actually has 40 dogs and they live at her house. Um, they're all like rescue dogs or like used to run or didn't make it. Um, you go out for, what was it? A couple hours on the dog sled. You actually get to learn how to do it and drive the sled by yourself. So that's kind of unique to her because I've heard a lot of other places you, they have a driver and you just sit in the sled. So at one point Seth was in the sled and I was driving and then we got to switch. Um, so definitely really fun, a really fun thing to do, I thought. The owner and operator is one of those people that you can tell the dog sledding is something that they live, breathe, love, do every day. Getting to share that sort of experience that's what makes it worthwhile because you're not only getting, you know, this hyper marketed thing, like with a lot of places, you're getting passion and you're getting a real person. And that was, that was pretty spectacular. It is about a three hour drive. Um, and it's, it's outside of Steamboat Springs in Yampa Valley. So definitely stay in Steamboat Springs. 
plenty of great Airbnbs there, plenty of great hotels. It's a ski town. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's an experience you'll never forget. But it doesn't go during the summer. Yeah. Dog sledding happens when there's snow. Plus, she sometimes adopts like the dogs that are done running. So if you go there and you really like a dog, it might be up for adoption. So that's kind of cool because she said a lot of people come back that have been dog sledding and end up adopting the dog. So it's a really nice, a nice thing that she does. So let's not forget one of the main reasons, aside from skiing, that people go to Colorado. Hiking. I mean, the state has the highest number of 14ers out of any state in the country. So, I mean, you, you could go for a week and not be able to hike everything. You could go for two weeks and probably not three weeks. I don't know. <laughs> your life. <laughs> it would be hard yeah. to, to fit a bunch of hikes in because there's just so many. And there's so many for so many different skill sets. Um, I mean, there's ones that require climbing, ones that require rappelling, you know, ones that your normal average person are not going to be able to do. But there's plenty that just anybody can go do. And that's, that's the one huge draw for hiking because there's so many different trails. They connect so many different places. Colorado is such an amazing place for, you know, just people caring about the environment. And their trails show that. You know, growing up on the Appalachian Trail, it's dangerous, it's dirty, but going to Colorado, you have a whole different world of hiking at your fingertips. And um, Rocky Mountain National Park is probably one that we enjoy the most, Emerald Lake, Hanging Lake. Um, you know, you, you can go literally anywhere in the state and hike, mm -hmm. but definitely the hiking. Get out get some fresh air, hit the trail. There's like a thousand REIs, so if you need <laughs> some hiking gear, get a membership and pick some stuff up. So the last thing on our list of like our favorite experiences has to be Red Rocks Amphitheater and I guess Park. Um, it's located about 30 minutes outside of Denver, so really close. Um, it's this beautiful Red Rock, so that's I guess why it's called that. Um, they have the amphitheater there, and they just started playing shows again. So before we left, we actually got to see Trevor Hall, one of our favorite musicians, play. Um, and I know they have shows like all summer long. And then there's also some hiking there. So again, like they're kind of easier trails, so I think anybody could really do them. But it goes around the park. You can go up in the amphitheater um, as long as there's not a show going on. So definitely check that out because it's really pretty and, and easy for anybody to access. And Red Rocks is one of those places, it's, it's one of the most magical music venues in this whole country. The acoustics are just amazing. Depending on what kind of music you listen to, it's just an amazing experience. We saw Nako and Trevor Hall there a couple years ago. We saw Trevor Hall there again. They do yoga on mm -hmm. Saturdays. You can go do yoga in the park. They do exercise stuff. They do all these shows. This summer they're doing drive-in, like movie theater down on the bottom half of the park. Download their app and start looking it up because there's so many good artists that do play there. Now, this portion is about where to stay. Obviously, you know, if you're going to Colorado, there's tons of beautiful places that you can stay, like Breckenridge mm -hmm. and Vail and Steamboat Springs, Manito Springs. You know, there's, there's so many beautiful places you can stay. But if you're going to be staying in Denver, you obviously want to be staying in the safest places that you can. So my recommendation, stay out of Aurora, which is not technically Denver, but stay out of Aurora and stay out of Capitol Hill. Um, the Capitol grounds and the zoo and the lake there are beautiful. You can drive in. But I, I really would not stay there. Um, our recommendation for where to stay would be the Lodo District, the lower downtown district, which is actually where we stayed. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can walk to Whole Foods, you can walk to the restaurants, you can walk to the river. 
it's amazing. Low High is directly behind that. Um, I think for at least Airbnbs, Low High tends to be a little bit more expensive in the Airbnb side of things. But then there's the Rhino District, which is kind of like the art district. Um, tons of, you know, very hipster bars, um, art stuff. You know, it's all three of those districts are just great to stay in. And that would be our recommendation for not only staying safe, but walkability and just enjoyment of where you're gonna stay. Okay, so the last portion of this video is gonna be dedicated to, what is Colorado known for? Marijuana? Dispensaries. <laughs> so my recommendation is Native Roots Dispensary. Native Roots is huge, there's like eight or 14, I don't know, there's a lot of different locations, they're all over the place. And when you walk in, to some of the local dispensaries, you know, they're, they're not as nice. There's a couple, I, I'll link them in the description below, that I would recommend depending on what you're trying to get. But when you walk into a Native Roots, it's like walking into an Apple store. I mean, the LED lighting, the hardwood cabinetry, the glass, the, the uniforms that people are wearing, everything is just immaculate and placed perfectly so. Native Roots has a huge selection. I mean, if you want to get infused edibles, if you want to get drinks, if you want to get flour, if you want to get concentrates, vapes, pick up merchandise, go buy a t-shirt. It's, it, I don't have enough good things to say about Native Roots because they're just so amazing. The people are nice. They're very professional. They're very helpful. So one thing that you do need to know is when you go to Colorado, you can't buy cannabis and then use it on the street or use it in the dispensary or in a coffee shop. You have to be in private. So make sure wherever you're staying for that time being, you can either use it in your Airbnb or on like a patio balcony um, because you you will get in trouble if you're using cannabis on the streets. You'll smell it, but that doesn't mean that you should partake in it. All right, so that's it for this video. That is our Denver, Colorado travel guide. Um, like I said, the next videos that you will be seeing will be from our road trip through Utah. As you can see, we didn't die, thankfully, because we're here in Scottsdale, <laughs> Arizona now. Um, the weather is incredibly hot here dry. and, uh, very dry desert, very, very, very much a desert, Black. but <laughs> if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure to hit that subscription button down below, hit the notification bell because all of our next like eight videos are already <laughs> filmed. So stay up to date because they're going to be dropping randomly because we have a lot of catching up to do. See you on the next one.